No, dude. Did you do that one? No. That's perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be closing the door shortly. What's up everybody, welcome back to the vlog. We're in Suva today. Uh, we're here for the women's convention. And, yeah, and the women are also going to the women's convention. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. We, Stephanie didn't pack me the right clothes, so this is her fault. So we're going to Valley City right now because I want to find uh, something that suits. Actually, no, I have to be, I have this dress code, so I have to go get a polo shirt. And John packed his own clothes, which shows you he's not a good packer. Yeah. Let's go get a polo shirt. I always feel bad leaving the kids, and so, I don't know. It's nice to get a little bit, like a little something. What did I get for the kids when I was in Suva last time? Anyways, the kids really want a uh, fishing rod and fishing reel. This isn't about me, this is about the kids. And so, <laughs> no, he is buying himself a gift. <laughs> as the children's gift. Yeah, they're gonna love it though. <laughs> I, I wanted a fishing rod and reel for a long time and actually we have a fishing lure sponsor that's coming on so we'll talk to more about that when we go pick up the package for the post office. But this is actually a really cool store, Bob's Hook Line and Sinker. So come check out the store, it's actually like John's really, gonna really go nice. get a f fishing line, hook line and sinker. <laughs> well, he did do this. He did, yeah. Come and take a picture. Yeah. Here, wait. Okay, thank you guys. Yeah, have a great day. So we just made it to the wing convention. There is a really cool energy in this place. Like everybody is just like really gung ho. There's a Canadian statement for you. Have you heard that before? Gung ho. Everybody just feels driven. There's like a really positive energy in here. Like it, it's, you know, we've been in Sanganga for a long time. The weather has not been great. We're like stuck inside. We see the same thing every day. So it's, I wouldn't choose to be anywhere else, but it's nice to have a change of scenery and be around like people who like want to really progress. So we're going to go in and check out the afternoon session. We don't actually speak until tomorrow, but um, we just want to get a vibe for like how people are, like the format and stuff like that, because I have stuff organized, but I want to make sure that it works for the style of speaking that they're doing. So we're going to go inside, sit down for a couple hours and see how it goes. And then we'll speak tomorrow. But uh, I think we should be, we should do something different, something fun this afternoon. So, we'll see what that is. We are just walking into the New Zealand game, so we took a break. We're gonna go back uh, to the GPH, to the wind convention, but... Mara Sevens is on, I can't not yeah. please come and just see. I mean, New Zealand is here, there's a team from England, I think. Yeah. And then, I think there's a Japan team here. Yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, Mara Sevens is, is actually a local mm. uh, rugby tournament. Mm. But because the level of rugby is so high in Fiji, mm. uh, Sevens rugby, they actually come, <laughs> they actually come and compete in this local tournament. They're usually kind of like a warm-up tournament. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna go check it out for like an hour or something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. All right. Yeah. 
How was it? Oh, it's good, man. It was, it was raining so hard right now. Like, it is raining. I don't know, guys. It really makes it look bad with the lights, but really mucky game, slippery ball. But good. Showed Roz what it's like to go to the local rugby tournament in Fiji. So now we're going to head back to the hotel. Place Federation, you go. Okay, we're at the Wynn Convention right now. What was your name? Kat. Kat. So, how has the couple days been and what has been a really standout experience for you? Uh, yesterday, amazing, mind-blowing. There were, um, one of the sessions in particular was very, very emotional, very heavy. Um, standout for me was um, just hearing about self-check. You know, women, we forever and a day put everybody else First, we forget about ourselves. So, you know, just to have someone up on stage and remind us of that, that was very impactful. Okay, so would it be fair to say going back into your week that you will be self-checking more at work, within your family, all that kind of stuff? One million percent, yes. Okay. Yeah. I think it's really great having all these women together. Yeah. Um, and it's just been a fun event. We just finished dancing, or everybody else did. I didn't. I'm not a good dancer. I'm, I'm not a dancer That's why as soon as the Zumba started, I skipped. Yeah, I'm like, oh, run away. I'm not a good dancer. But thank you for answering the question, and uh, hope the rest of the day goes really well. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> What was your name? Vera Chute. And I'm Shireen Fong. So we're just here for the weekend. What has been a standout moment for you so far? I think that, you know, how um, the panelists, how their stories just resonates with the rest of the, the room. Uh, although we come from different backgrounds, civil society, corporates, entrepreneurs, but we all have uh, shared the same challenges and um, uh, been good to hear. So what's, what's the major takeaway for yourself? What are you going to leave this weekend with, like pushing you forward? Um, three, I think three for me. One is um, uh, filling the spaces. Another one is uh, raising my hand, support another woman, pull another woman up, and um, encouraging the men to take up the challenge and uh, champion change in gender equality. That's really great. And yourself, how long have you been in this program for or helping with? Okay, so uh, I am uh, the uh, chairperson of the uh, Women Entrepreneurs Business Council and this is our third win convention and third participation for myself. So for me, my biggest takeaway is being comfortable with being uncomfortable. <laughs> That's right. Well, I think I see yourself leading a lot of things in these spaces, in Leadership Fiji and such. Um, you did an excellent job. And we actually just met today, so I wanted to hear your opinion and your thoughts. And you have the best headdress, so. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you from the committee. <laughs> Again, Stephanie, just so you know, even I'm wearing a headdress, we support our women uh, members. And so this is done by one of our women members, similarly with hers and my earring. So we try to support our women members. Even the trousers I'm wearing is from her shop. So, you know, we, we support all our women and, and members. The gifts for today even were uh, bought from our women members. Oh, that's awesome. And you'll receive one of them too, you and Jonathan. Oh, thank you. Okay, well that's all we'll do for now, but we just want to hear from our ladies. And then um, we'll put this online sometime and enjoy yes. kind of seeing and the perspective from there. And just to end, we're both from Vanua Levu. Yes. All three of us, yes. hey? Yes, we're all from the Madawata province. So I'm from Madawata, Vasu is Androve. Bye. I'm ready. <laughs> Steph's ready. I know, there's a difference. Like, nothing changes. You know, like, it, the way I've heard it described to me actually once by somebody was when you're speaking to a room full of people, every single person is just an individual. There just happens to be a bunch of individuals. So don't worry about speaking to all the people. Just th like you're talking to one person. The more Instead important thing that he learned is when you're speaking to a room full of women, they won't listen to you unless your shoes are nice. That's a myth. So? <laughs> I didn't listen to that rule. I've just got my classic footwear that I wear every day of my life on. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's go. Please join me in welcoming our dynamic duos onto the stage. The first couple. They create content so their businesses can create employment opportunities. They say they're serial strugglers. Aslatuna. 
but they are self-proclaiming souvoir connoisseurs. Please put your hands together for Stephanie and Jonathan Batisabisari of the Waka family. questions, um, really asking them about what they've been doing in their spaces after they share their journeys. We'll get them to share their stories. In the meantime, we've got Pigeonhole open if you have any burning questions that you want to pop in immediately. But with that said, I'd like to invite uh, Jonathan and Stephanie to share their journey. Check. All right. Thank you guys for having us. And uh, obviously you guys know we do social media, so I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to make a social media post for your business, all right? We're gonna do this live on the spot. When I count, I'm gonna count down, all right? Three to one, when I get to one, everybody's gonna say, win, and you're gonna throw your hands up in the air, right? Just, just like we did earlier, okay yeah, guys, you right? gotta help us with this. So I'm gonna do this on video, we're gonna post it later today, all right? Three, two, one, win, right? Okay, okay, <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, we're here at the 2024 WIND convention. Three, two, one. <laughs> now I'm a guy talking on a stage to a bunch of ladies, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video right now. <laughs> there you go, and that's a video that's gonna get a ton of likes for our brand, right? <laughs> right, I'm, I'm a rover, so I'm gonna pop up the stage. Yeah, we're gonna head down on Barefoot, because I'm super nervous, I was gonna trip. Someone said, break the leg, and I said, I don't want to. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start off, and uh, Stephanie's gonna freestyle as, uh, as we go along. She's a bit more of the freestyler. So our topic of uh, conversation today was inspiring solutions for community success. And so what that means for us is giving hope, inspiring solutions. And that's what we use social media for. That's what we at least hope we're trying to use it for. Hopefully, hopefully you guys see that in the way we utilize these platforms. We feel like it's the best way to remove the smoking mirrors that often surrounds business. There are, at least in the north, any CBM in the house today? <laughs> at least in the north, there's a real smoking mirrors around business. And it's hard to crack, it's hard to get ideas, it's hard, there's, not, there's not a lot of sharing of information. And so we want, there's two types of leaders. There's inspirational and then the second or the second right now. So inspirational leader, we want to be the inspirational leaders anyways. We want people to look at us and feel like, oh, if they can do it, we can do it. And so that's what we're trying to get through social media. And I have a story for you guys. So this is a story about a guy and he died. At least all of his friends thought that he was dead. His friends go fishing in this boat. They're all in the water, net fishing. They see this guy walk. A still silhouette of a man walks down to the shore, and this guy calls out to them. He's like, "Have you guys caught any fish?" And his friends are like, "No, we haven't caught anything." He's like, "All right, then throw your net on the other side of the boat." So they throw the net on the other side of the boat. And they catch a bunch of fish. Actually, they catch so many fish that the boat starts to sink. And at that moment, they realize that this friend that they thought was dead—he was actually a really good fisherman. He was actually a carpenter by trade. All right. They realized who it was. And one of the guys actually jumped off the boat and swam to shore. And when and they came to shore on the boat, and when they got to shore, they realized that, oh wow, this guy's already prepared breakfast. And he said, Hey, come have breakfast with me. And there was fish on the fire. That's like the best way to have fish, I think. You can have them, right? Just fish on the fire, just fresh like that. So they came, he had already made breakfast for them. 
and they enjoyed a meal together. And it was at that point that he said, go and feed my sheep. He also happened to have a big following of people, and these sheep were people. And obviously the guy that I'm referring to is Jesus. I'm not trying to get religious, but he is the guy that we, we model our, our business practices off. And the, the inspiration that we get for a lot of the ways or the ideas that we can, the ways that we conduct ourselves and the ideas that we have are from this man. And in this story, I think we can say he's a pretty influential guy. Whether you're a Christian or not, whatever, I mean, BC, AD, the calendar is, reflects his life. And so we choose to model after that. And so the first thing that we realized about this story was like, hey, an influential guy in his community, or at least amongst his group of friends, the first thing he did was he gave them advice that helped them win. And he said, throw your name on the other side, right? And so before expecting people to follow him, and before expecting, like, he just like, I'm an authority figure, you guys got to listen to me. He was like, hey, here's some advice to help you win. And they won. Look how much fish, 153. A good day for me is like five or ten. After that, he served them breakfast. That's crazy. Everybody talks about the fish and the crazy catch in the story. I'm like, that's weird that Jesus served them breakfast. So he served his staff. He served his community. He served his friends. And a lot of us want to just like, and there's a lot of toxic leadership in the workforce today that's like, you just listen to me because I'm in this position. But they don't earn it. And I think we strongly believe in servant leadership. Yeah, we've come into the country and with our businesses that's been a big priority of ours is coming in and serving people first. So if some of you don't know us or follow us, we do, you know, put our lives on social media, how that concern is. John is from Fiji originally, was born here, and his dad's from here. Um, and we've been coming back, we've been married now 12 years, we've been coming back every few years to visit family. But we just saw that there was so much opportunity for business in this country. I think it's easier when you're overseas, you see what's going on there, and you come back here and you go, oh, there's so many holes of opportunity that you can utilize, like why is that not happening? And we have a business in Canada currently, that's how we're able to come here and fund ourselves to do that. Um, it was a business that I started when we first got married, so I was 21. And I actually started it because I had the worst bosses, like horrible people. <laughs> and they kind of just tortured me to the point where I was like, you know what, I could probably do better than them. I could probably make a space for people to work where they didn't hate it. We all have to work to feed our families, but we don't do it always if we enjoy it. And so I thought, let's create that space. Um, we do only employ women in Canada, which is really awesome and different. Even for Canada, it's something that um, we've just pursued wholeheartedly. And then after we had our first son, I asked John to put his job and come run the business there for me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you ladies know, with having kids, it's so hard. You just don't really know what's going to happen. I kind of went three months before we had our first son. I went, what if I die? What if I go into surgery? What am I doing? I didn't eat, but it was okay. In labor, I was like answering phone calls. It was fine. <laughs> we got through it. Sure. Um, and then a lot of one thing that you guys might not know about us, um, when we decided to move to Fiji, John wanted to pursue business here. And I love business so much. But it was actually my idea to kind of make the big jump. A lot of people always say, oh, but your wife, she's so lovely and like following you. But John would never have asked me to do that. <laughs> he would have never been like, honey, we're going over to Fiji. Because he would have known how opposed I would be to something that I wasn't fully prepared for. So that's kind of why we made the jump over here. We currently have a coffee shop um, in St. Gaia. That's our small little town that we live by. Um, it's the ghetto, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but we love it. So for John's family is, and we employ women at that coffee shop. And the first thing we did when we opened it, we had women in there, and they were all kind of new to working in business. And the first thing we did, we had an outside bathroom, which the tenants upstairs had like their sewer pipe over the toilet door, and it had been leaking and had like their toilet fecal matter all over the door. And so obviously you have customers come in, they have to fix the pipe, and then the poop needed to be removed. And so when we came in, I was like, oh, I have to be the one to clean the poop. Because my staff need to see that there is no job that's too low for them to do. Like it's me as the owner of the business, if I can come in and actually scrub off the poop, it might be like, this is great, our customers now have a clean toilet. Then they can come into this and go, I can clean the toilet. It's fine, the owner did it. 
And our manager has a really good outlook of now serving our staff so our staff know that they can serve our customers full heartedly. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we've been currently working on, we just launched our media company. So we launched it. It's a couple weeks ago. Yeah, not too long ago. Yeah. And so we, we use media to get the word out there. And I believe that you guys, if you guys have a business, every company should be a social media company first and then do what you do in this day and age. There are a lot of people on, uh, that have built their businesses without the use of social media. But it is the best way to leverage audience and the time that you have. And so when we make a post, we're able to reach a bunch of people. So first we create the audience. That's our uh, idea behind this. Is first we're gonna create the audience and then we're gonna create the businesses. So once we have ideas and we line up everything and we think it's a good idea, uh, there's like 400,000 people that we can make a post and then everybody sees it. And then as long as we just keep that, that word going, you guys, when you guys think of a media company, and we say Walk in Media is now launched to help businesses use social media, NGOs use social media, you guys are like, oh, Walk in Media can help us with that. And that's how that works. So I just think that you can, please use social media. Nobody cares about really much about the what that you sell or the service you provide. It's about the why. And that's what we want to show is like, our last name isn't even Waka, our last name is Bucks and Sector. That's, that's <laughs> like you can call me Mrs. Waka. Yeah. <laughs> but that just means that the brand is working, right? And so use your, you are a unique person. You are unique and you have a unique story. You think that like we're unique because we moved to Fiji and blah, blah, blah. No, it's like, you know how many people can relate with your story? So be a personal brand and people will follow you and they'll be interested in you. And when you have a product, they'll know you, they'll trust you, and they'll buy from you. Yeah, I think a really great example of the impact of that is our coffee shop in St. Anka. Like you said, it is in the ghetto. It's actually in a terrible location. It's not on the highway. You would actually have to search for us. If you go through St. Anka, if you remember that we're there, we're off the road, like down a ways. It is a miracle that people can find us. We don't have a lot of local support. People in town don't come to have coffee. It's actually mostly people from Suva people from overseas, people that follow us on our social media. That's what keeps it afloat. And it's surprising because you're like, how is anyone coming to find us in this little piece of heaven? So and cool. they make it there. So we're really pleased to see the impact of that. And even if you guys are too shy to be in front of the camera, I know I am. John the other day was in the rugby stadium and he was just doing like a film in front of like 500 people watching him. And I was like, oh, I'd rather die than do that. That is horrifying. But then at the same time, I just force myself to get out there and do that. You don't even have to have your face there. You can get one of your staff to help you, or you can go around your store, or whatever product you have, and just talk about it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you will be in front of the camera. Uh, like, I, I saw one thing that uh, Mana Coffee, Coffee was doing, was like they were having telenovel sessions. And that's great. Like, why don't you know for mental health? Like, who cares about coffee? And there's lots of places you can go for desserts. There's lots of places you can go for coffee. Well, I like coffee. but. What sets you apart is unique chats that they had. I think that, like stuff like that is cool. Things that connect your humanity with the boring products and services. And I think you guys would be very surprised if you share your story that other women like you out there can connect with it, that people sure. have experienced the same thing, and also that people are looking for the product that you sell. And it just so happens that it's coming from a wonderful woman that they love and support your story. And that's even better. Why would you put your money there instead of some guy or some woman that you don't know, you don't care about? If it's something that impacted you, you'll go, oh, I'll spend my money there. And we all vote with our dollars. So that's something that you guys can really do like. So We're done with stuff. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you ladies. Thank you ladies. Thank you ladies.
All right. Kind of like, kind of like okay. is there anything distracting in the moment? They really look good, yeah. <laughs> Except for All the... Right. I'm gonna wear this to the lobby and see if anybody says anything. <laughs> but we have a masquerade tonight, so... This is the only mask that they had in the store. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look it's, actually good, it's right? either this or like a Superman or like a dinosaur mask. So I was like, dude, superheroes. It has to be superheroes. Yeah. Because the boys are like this. Good like choice. see pictures? Yeah. So, yeah. Good choice. Good choice, uh, Steph. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the... Uh, you're getting any weird looks. Pretty good. <laughs> I'm so excited to go back. <laughs> so, back to the village. Back to the village. Mixed emotions. It's actually really mixed emotions because like I'm excited to go back and see the boys. But mm. this is actually really inspire, encouraging, I guess, because we live out in the middle of the bush, and so sometimes we don't know if what we do actually matters. You see your guys' content, and yeah, it matters. Yeah, and we see your guys' comments. We see your guys' likes and everything and, and that but that's not it's hard to it's not very tangible mm. but when we see you guys in person and you guys say hello and, you know we hang out take pictures and that's encouraging it makes it feel like we're making a difference or like our brand is developing mm. so appreciate that uh, i guess we better go get checked in okay. thank you so much thank you thank you all right, thank you. Please ensure that your seatbelt is fastened. Well, everybody, we made it back to Lombasa. We made it back to Wanua Bink. And uh, feeling pretty lonely. Feeling sad. <laughs> no, just Excited to see the boys? Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for everybody who showed us support in Sula. It's been just awesome. And uh, yeah, every time we come down, it's just like, give us a little bit of a boost. It's nice to see something different. We will uh, catch you guys on the next vlog. In the meantime, have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. <laughs>